Good afternoon. I have the honor of introducing the work that we are doing at Faster Cures to build the future of health data. Faster Cures, a center of the Milken Institute, is driven by a singular goal, to save lives by speeding science to all patients. Over the past several years, Faster Cures has been a champion for greater patient engagement in medical research. One of our recent efforts, Health Data Basics, created tools to demystify health data because we know that patients need to understand and appreciate the value of their health data, both for managing their own conditions as well as for advancing medical research. Now, as much as we spend a lot of time talking about health data, we don't forget that behind the data stand patients. Take my cousin. He's been living with stage four non-small cell lung cancer for over six years. Now, he asked that I not use his name because, frankly, he doesn't know you people. <laughs> I mean, not like I do. But to give you a sense of who he is, he would want me to stand up here and tell you all about how strong he's been in the face of his diagnosis. And that has certainly been true. But I, so I pulled my family, and we decided that the word that we would use to describe him is cheap. <laughs> now, in his defense, he would say, he's not cheap. He just values money more than most people. <laughs> but over the last six years, he'd also say that he has learned to value time more than most people because you never know how life is going to unfold. Now, looking back, the first indication that something was wrong should have been that he was losing weight without trying and he was getting tired more easily. Eventually, he was diagnosed by a chest x-ray. Now, if you've been through this, you know that it quickly becomes a blur of appointments and tests and lots and lots of questions and very few clear answers. But early on, we actually did, we got a clear answer. He had his tumor genetically sequenced, and it was found to have a rare mutation, and that mutation had a targeted therapy. And pretty soon after he started therapy, he was able to return to work and take family vacations and do most of the things that he was doing before he was diagnosed. That time has lasted longer than any of us had expected. But recently, he hit a rough patch. His targeted therapy stopped working, and so at the advice of his oncologist, he enrolled in a clinical trial. And the clinical trial required him to travel away from home and to stay at a hotel. And the morning of his first trial visit, when he was getting ready at his hotel, he had a series of seizures. So now, all of a sudden, he was in a new hospital, in a neurology, not an oncology unit, with new doctors, and we were all thrust back into the churn of trying to find him the right treatment. Now, after weeks at the hospital and lots of family support, actually kind of picture the film, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, but in an ICU, it was a lot of family support. <laughs> but finally he recovered enough, and, and the hospitals actually had to coordinate enough to get him transferred for care back home. Now, my cousin's time with us is still unfolding. But when it comes to health data, his story shows the success 
as well as the untapped potential of bringing different types of data together to change outcomes now and in the future. So take, for example, the fact that weight loss and fatigue are early signs of many conditions, not just cancer. Could data from digital technologies like a smart scale or an activity tracker have provided him with an earlier diagnosis? We're just starting to be able to ask these questions and we're just starting to be able to provide answers. He had his tumor genetically sequenced and then he found the right treatment for him, the best treatment for him. And when that stopped working, he enrolled in a clinical trial. So can we pull all this data together and combine it to develop even more targeted therapies? But to get there, we're gonna need a lot of people participating. And we have to make it easier for them to do so. And finally, if we really wanna understand disease and outcomes, we have to look at where people live, work, and play. So I don't know how many of you have a smartphone, but we can use, thank you. We can use, could we use your data? Could we use the data from people just living in their everyday lives to better predict and prevent disease as well as to develop new medical solutions? So when we're sick, we all want care to revolve around us as patients. My cousin wants the best care for himself. He also wants to make it easier for patients who come after him. And this has been his commitment. So what is the commitment that he can expect from all the organizations in which he has entrusted his health data? Too often the system doesn't work. Data doesn't flow between providers. Patients don't have access to their data. They can't control it. Um, data security is breached. The data is not used the way that patients intended, or it's not even clear to patients, how it's being used to help drive their care or advance medical research. And when this happens, trust erodes. To make health data work for the benefit of all patients, we have to build trust among all actors in the system. Through this set of shared values. That's why Faster Cures is bringing together a community of like-minded organizations like these early adopters who are interested in building a future where health data are accessible, secure, ethically, and transparently used for the benefit of all. To join, wait, you have cards actually that were on your chairs and they're not placemats, so, but you could. Um, to join, you can sign your name on your card, leave it on your chair or on the table. Our staff will come by and collect it after the panel discussion that will follow. We know that building the future of health data is going to take a diverse community. From traditional health care organizations to consumer companies, to patient groups and digital health innovators, to medical researchers and product developers, and of course, the patients themselves. So please join us. Let's start today. Thank you.